What's going on ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Dino here and welcome back to Subnautica. I have put in probably about three or four hours into the game since the last episode and we've made some progress, some of which is very exciting. Um, one of the things, I, I built a base, spoiler alert, and uh, it's a new base that I haven't shown you guys yet, so we're going to head straight there. But to do it, also we're as far up in the, uh, the lava area as possible. And I don't know what's going on with the game, but there's some sort of visual glitch where as soon as you load in, everything's really dark. And then it gets all red. It's very strange. Uh, but we also built... The grappling arm, or whatever it's called. I forgot the actual name for it, but it's so nice. But take a look at our new base. It's beautiful. It's not done yet. Uh, it's still very much a work in progress. But it's nice. And... It is named Firebase Omega, which I think sounds pretty freaking sweet. And I went ahead and built a moon pool down here too. I didn't think I needed it. I could have just done with a uh, power cell charger, but all of the, um, see what I mean about it being very much a work in progress. Uh, all of the, what are they called? The lava, not the lava larva, but the other creatures that are down here that shoot the uh, lava rocks at us. Um, and it looked like amphibians or lizards, whatever. They were doing damage to Ron with an, when I wasn't even in him. And so I'd leave him uh, right outside. I'd come inside. I'd do stuff for like five minutes. I'd come back outside and he'd almost be dead. Um, so it was very terrifying. But I think this base looks cool. We got some neat views. Uh, these trees stick out like a sore thumb. But I like having a base down here. It's really cool. And for power, I'll go ahead and show you guys here in a sec. But let me go ahead and top off on food and water real quick. Uh, but for power, we're doing something we've never done before, which I personally think is really cool. And it's really, really freaking useful. <laughs> it makes it super easy. Uh, unlike a... I guess we'll take some of this as well. Why not? Um, I put a water filtration machine down here so we can have some stuff to take with us on our journeys. Uh, which I don't know how many more journeys we have in store, but... Uh, anyway, I'm getting distracted here. So, all these are just resources for projects I was working on. Uh, we have our blue tablet, and then I've got these other rooms. I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet, but we have them. So, uh, and also, I don't have a ladder to it yet. That's something I should probably do real quick. I think ladders are just one. Um, but we have a... No, there are two. We have a uh, scanner room up top and clearly I haven't visited it yet since I, I built it like right before the episode started and I think our access is right here it is yes very awkward spot for a ladder like right in the middle of the hallway but again I really wish you could adjust that but anyway we have a scanner room this is gonna be one I fully upgrade because there are some resources down here mostly well not mostly kyanite that stuff sticks out like a sore thumb is very easy to find but there's a lot of resources down here. Lots of nodes that we can harvest with our Reaper of Nodes, aka Ron, aka the Prawn suit. But anyway, that's enough for this base. Um, nothing super fancy about it. I just wanted to show you guys that it's built because it was getting very, very annoying making trips all the way back to the closest base being Ghost Recon. But making trips all the way back to Cliffside Command as well, I think I made three in my playtime. Oh my goodness, it's ridiculous. But now that our base is right here, um, I need to turn that off. Why is that on? Go away, life bud. Um, now that our base is right here, relative to everything, uh, we come in from over there. We've made that trip down here a couple times together. And then if we head over this direction, and I guess I could make it faster, using the the grappling arm we drop down into this pit and this is the pit i was originally looking for and then if we go through this this should take us pretty much right to the alien base so we have a really nice setup here i was originally considering doing the base down here but then like it, yeah it looks cool but if you're just standing here and you look around like it's all the same and it really doesn't give the feel that there's lava all over it. Yeah, there's some underneath of us, but 
I wanted to be surrounded by lava, so we built our base on top of a lava. Lava river, I guess, would be the word for it. But this is so cool, and if you've ever wanted to feel like Spider-Man in a game that's not Spider-Man, this is the one to do it in, because you can just swing from the rooftops or the cave tops. And it's so much fun. And it's actually pretty fast, too. Um, this thing doesn't have the greatest range. Like, I couldn't just reach that just then. But it's really cool, and we can traverse this without ever having to deal with that lovely beast. Although we're still totally going to have to deal with him. Uh, by deal with him, I mean, like, go over top of him, maybe? Please, no! Quick escape! Oh, come on. Seriously? That wasn't quick enough? <laughs> but one thing that's cool about this is it doesn't require you to use energy? Uh, or like on... On Ron? So I can just sit up here and hold myself to the ceiling while I regain my thrusters. And then I can let go and continue and continue sustaining myself with my thrusters, which is really cool. I really like having this. Although the only downside is we can't really fight things or grab items off the ground. Um, I did find out that you can quote unquote fight things by drilling them. We were getting attacked while harvesting some resources and I went ahead and did that to kill things and it worked pretty well. I don't know if it's super well, but I think it worked pretty well. But anyway, let's get into the meat and potatoes of today's episode. We finally have our blue tablet. I forgot to bring beacons with us. That's something I'll definitely be doing, is adding a beacon outside each of the uh, kind of portal entrances, or I don't know if that's the word for them. The uh, warp gates, they each take us to a different zone, which has a portal or a, an opening that connects us to the outside world, but I will be adding those beacons thanks to a suggestion that I got. And if I'm not mistaken, this looks like the last room in this base. So let's go check it out. I don't have a clue what to expect. I was talking with Carson at work today and he, he was telling me, or he was asking, you know, how do you have that willpower not to go just explore that? So, I'm hoping that this is going to be something pretty sweet. Um, we're going to leave Ron behind just because... I don't know. Maybe not. Just kidding. Uh, that's a giant hole of water. <laughs> so, we might be needing Ron. Uh, we're going to go around first, though. It looks like there's something on the other side. I d Crap, is that another? Don't tell me I need another blue tablet. I can always go make one now that base is a lot closer than it was. That looks like something, but I can't even get up there. Um, I don't know. Okay. Maybe we'll need one. Maybe we won't. I don't know why I suddenly just got really terrified of what could be under here. But let's go find out. Whoa. That would be why. This is the thing that's been talking to us. Are you here to play? Others came here once. They built these walls. They played alone. They bored me. Now they're gone. And instead, we have you. We are curious whether you swim with the current or fight against it as they did. Uh, what? what's the correct answer? Do I go follow that thing? Holy crap, this place is big. Or deep, rather. Okay, so that's a stalker. I guess we just jump off the sign? Screw it, let's go. I think this thing's friendly? 
Maybe? Maybe not? Maybe I should have the torpedo arm with me right now? Whoa. Detecting unusually passive behavioral patterns in nearby predators. Reason unknown. Yeah, I was just gonna say. This looks like an area where there's some of everything. We've got acid mushrooms, we've got stalkers, we've got bonefish, peepers. This is cool. Environment the alien vents indicate the water here is rich with a rare plankton-like life form, which depends on the organic detritus produced by the ecosystem around it. The plant life in this area is growing outside its normal conditions. Yeah, Other you don't life say. forms fertilizing and pruning the vegetation may be offsetting this environmental deficit. Ooh. This is really neat. The cave system with a giant alien tentacle thing going through it. I don't think that's anything. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. Just connects up to this. But this looks like something as it's emitting a giant beam of light. Ooh, hello. Mother Teresa or mother whatever thingy you are. Um, where do we go? This looks like a warp gate that got collapsed upon by sand. How do I go talk to that thing and tell it? Is that? No, that's just part of the wall. It's just different colored. Okay, I guess we'll just make a, a lap around the perimeter here and see what there is to see. This is strange. So the aliens built up a giant facility to contain this thing? Or... Can I grab onto it? I'm gonna assume that's a no. Okay. Is that something in the middle there? I don't know. There's so much cool stuff. Take like a little bit of every biome. Only a little bit, though. This looks like something. Yes, very much so. Ooh. Incubator. Yeah. Hatching enzymes. Cool. The emperor's specimen's eggs are attached to some form of incubator. In a normal life cycle, it seems likely that sea emperors would have buried their eggs in shallow waters, where different organic materials in the soil would have triggered a hatching response. The incubator suggests the aliens had resorted to developing artificial hatching enzymes, which would simulate the egg's natural hatching environment, but were unable to discover the formula. With extensive information on the sea emperors themselves, it may still be possible to fabricate an artificial hatching enzyme using indigenous ingredients. However, the only surviving source of that information may be the Sea Emperor itself. Whoa! I get why they're called that. And is it making sure I don't disrupt its eggs? Do I have any ion cubes on me? I don't think I do. Um, assuming this thing will let me leave, I'm gonna be right back and go harvest some from up top. And then we will get this thing going, I guess. And I guess we can scan one of these while we're here, too. Oh, man. Shell. Uncommonly strong shell lining. Organic growth. It's so weird not to freak out with all these things swimming around right on the other side of my PDA. That's it's not what I'm used to at all. Organic growth on the exterior suggests these eggs may be hundreds or thousands of years old. Alien devices penetrate the outer shell layer, likely designed to supply them with nutrients and to isolate them from the surrounding environment. The amniotic sac. Like many eggs on 4546B, these do not contain a nutrient supply, which is slowly exhausted by the embryo. Instead, they exist in a form of natural stasis, awaiting appropriate hatching conditions. The fetal organism, there is a high genetic match between these organisms and the leviathan in the facility. They appear to be stable and healthy. 
It is likely that ideal hatching conditions for these eggs vary considerably from ideal survival conditions for the parent. Okay, so only if I go near the eggs does it perch down there and... That's so cool. Welcome aboard, Captain. I really like this. Okay, let's head back up top, uh, grab an ion cube, and I'll be right back. All right, ion cube in hand. And now that we have an audience, that is so terrifying, but so awesome. All right, let's do it. Oh, that was very anticlimactic. I gathered them in uh, Ron here. So let's grab those. There we go. Okay, now. Oh man, I kind of want—I kind of want her to be watching us as we do this. I—I I don't know what it's gonna trigger. All right, that's better. Let's do it. I have no idea what this is gonna do. My young need to hatch, to play outside this place. We have been here so long. The others built a passage to reach the world outside. I asked them for this freedom, but they could not hear me. If you help us, I will give you freely what the others tried in vain to take. What, the enzyme? For the cure? Okay, um... Insert hatching enzymes. Let's do it! This is... We might be getting the cure here real quick. What? Uh... That was... Kind of anticlimactic, although now she's looking over there, so let's head to the gate. Uh, maybe the sand's shifted and we can now access it? Because she's like staring that thing down. Well, they hadn't shifted yet, but now they most certainly have. This is so awesomely terrifying. Like, if this thing were to turn on us and suddenly not be our friend... Whew, no thank you. With the passage you've opened, my young can leave this place. But first they must feel the time is right and break free of their shells. This is what the others could not force from me. To you, I give the secret willingly. Hatching enzyme. New blueprint acquired. Oh man. That's gonna take some work. Eye stock we've seen, fungal sample we've gathered, ghost weed we've seen. Bush bulb, I'm gonna assume is the cave bush. But a sea crown? Actually, is any of this ab able to be gathered here? That could be awesome, if that's the case. Let me do some looking around, and I will report my findings to you guys in just one sec. Alright, well, I found a sea crown. I think this is the first of these I've seen. Otherwise, I probably would have scanned it beforehand. But we can grab a sea crown seed. Plant consists primarily of a large bladder-like sac containing a huge variety of bacterial species, which may enable it to break down complex compounds it draws from the root system. Shares large sections of genetic code with the membrane tree. Have we seen a membrane tree? I'm not sure. Environment scans indicate this plant is rare to the point of extinction. Cool. So that might be one of the only ones. Um, cave bush does not yield. What we need uh, yields cave bush seed, and we need 
bulb bush sample, which looks like it has little blue bulbs on it. Uh, the eye stock and the fungal sample ghost weed. I don't know. I don't think it's all going to be able to be found here. I've done a little bit of looking around and I haven't had too much luck. Maybe there's more to it that I'm missing, but uh, what are these things called again? Rogue Cradle. Oh, I was like, this is not an acid mushroom. What am I looking at? But yeah, this area, I don't know if it's going to have everything. I don't think so, but we at least found the one that I have, well, one of the two I have never seen before. I don't imagine bulb bush is going to be that hard to find. It's probably just in a biome we haven't discovered yet. But this area is still just really cool. It's lacking what we need, clearly, but that's fine. We'll go grab that and, and come back. But unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have time for this one. So as much as I know, I am dragging out this final encounter. I'm assuming this is really near the end. We're about to get the enzyme and then cure ourselves and then build a ship. Seconds. Oh crap. And then get off the planet, which is crazy. Um, are we going to die down here? I'm thinking we might be dying down here. But alright guys, we will go ahead and take care of all of all the gathering off camera before next episode. And when we get back next time, we will be synthesizing a cure. But alright guys, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. And until then, as always, take care. <laughs>